Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and I've spent, <laughs> I spent all morning doing the memes. So a lot of you complain that I don't do enough memes. A lot of you say you want to see more memes. I know some of you are just really over it and skip right through it. That's fine. But uh, but yeah, we're running late. It's currently 10 to 10 and I've only just got done making the memes. So I hope you appreciate a little bit of extra special memeage this morning. I got a couple of announcements to make very quickly. First of all, I have a fishing trip planned on Tuesday this week coming. So that is Tuesday the 28th. Historically speaking... When I go fishing, my markets tend to crash, okay? So perhaps be on guard for Tuesday next week. And the second announcement is I'm getting together with Kemazabi this evening and we are gonna we're gonna have a catch up and present a couple of ideas to each other. I am gonna record it. It's not gonna be live, but look out for that in the not too distant future. If we say anything of value, then we will indeed be posting it to one or both of our channels. And so without further ado, let's get into it, okay? Because the probability of a recession seems to have disappeared. So we can all breathe a sigh of relief, okay? No need to worry, okay? No need to be fearful. I'm gonna stop doing posting, okay? Third angle, whether it sets or not, let's just keep going up forever. No problem anywhere to be seen. Of course, the absolute reality is at tops, this is exactly what we wanna see proliferate. As I've been saying over and over again, we wanna see people cheering the Fed on, well done for the soft landing or no landing, no chance of recession, no more cycles, no more bear markets. So right on schedule, Okay, right as we apparently are thinking about thinking about setting a third and final blow off angle, we are seeing more and more of these types of things start to proliferate. I've also had several people reach out to me and say that when they suggest the top might be closer than people think, they are being attacked, abused in some cases. Okay, so good. That's what we want to see. Slowly but surely, we want every last bear to become a bull. We want every man and his dog to tell us that there's no way we have a recession. Everything is gravy. Everything is fine. And there are absolutely no signs of underlying weakness, right? Right? Well, there are some bearish divergences on the RSI for the S&P 500 on a weekly time frame. okay? Price making a higher high, whilst the oscillator divergence shows lower highs. Have we ever seen this before? Yes. What happened next? That. What about here? Okay, more divergence. What happened? C19 plunge. So it doesn't have to play out just because we have divergence. Divergences can occur for a while and then this could break out. Probably, probably won't go that high, but this could indeed break the divergence and continue up and we could see something like this, okay, in the meantime. So just because divergence has shown up, it doesn't necessarily mean that a crash is coming any day now, right? What it does suggest or imply or hint at, however, is that momentum is waning into this current rise in price. So it's something to take note of, it's something to observe, it's something to keep on the back burner of our minds, particularly if more and more people start to become convinced that nothing could possibly go wrong here. There are more subtle hints that this current rally at least, and this doesn't necessarily mean we have to start calling tops at this point, but this current rally at the moment is perhaps at least showing signs of waning momentum. Again, as we've got the price making higher highs, okay, higher highs across the top, we also have the number of components 
of the S&P trading above their 50 day moving average, slowly but surely making lower highs. Now, similarly with the oscillator divergence that we just showed, okay, more and more stocks can start to take part in this rally. More and more stocks can indeed climb above their 50 day moving average. And if we continue to go up with more and more stocks trading above their 50 moving average on the daily charts, we could certainly see this thing written off as a warning signal, okay? We could certainly undo the potential signs of waning momentum here. But as it stands, we not only have the oscillator divergence, we also have the moving average divergence as well. Something to take note of. And it's not just the RSI, okay? It's also the MACD divergence that we're seeing as well. So again, this can uncross and undo. This can break above. This can continue up. Happy days. But these are subtle hints and tells from the market that perhaps the current rally is rotting from the inside. As ever, this is not a sell signal, okay? We still want to wait for technical breakdowns. We still want to wait for confirmation via failed daily cycles. But... This is something to take note of because towards tops, you would expect momentum to wane. You would also, as I showed you, expect to see people become more and more confident that momentum will never wane. So, so far, so good, I would say, for the camel crew at least. A couple of other things I wanted to point out, okay? This is more just for context or illustration purposes. A million seconds ago was the 8th of May. A billion seconds ago was 1993. And one trillion seconds ago was 30,000 BC, okay? So... <laughs> When we try to comprehend these massive numbers, such as the 36 trillion that the US is currently in debt funded and what we at 220 trillion unfunded, something like that. Meanwhile, they are adding a trillion dollars of new debt every 100 days, a trillion every 100 days, okay? To put in perspective of just how much money this is, just how broken the system is, okay? Really let this sink in. Also in the interest of being accurate here, 34.7 trillion according to the national debt clock, that is the funded, okay? That's the debt that's been bought to market. And down here in the bottom right, the US unfunded liabilities, to <laughs> 215 trillion. This, of course, is things that people are counting on, okay? This is Medicare, Medicaid, pensions. This debt has not even been bought to market yet. So a house of cards? Yeah, I think so. DT's presidential campaign officially accepts Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, okay? This is <laughs> one way to win over the votes, I guess, right? If you're in the camp of people that thinks voting works, then at least he's probably gonna try to win over some of those people. And speaking of Bitcoin, Grayscale had 72 million in inflows in the last four days. So since launch, it's had 79 consecutive days of outflow and has averaged $270 million in those outflows. But at the hard right edge, things appear to be turning, okay? Is the tide turning? Is this just a little blip for a couple of days before resumption? We're gonna find out, but so far, kind of encouraging, right? Over in El Salvador, they've just crossed 400 million in Bitcoin holdings, and are now 81 million in profit. So happy days for El Salvador. We're gonna get to the TA in a minute, but I just wanted to point to this. I'm probably gonna continue to point to this until it stops being in play, okay? I'm not fully committed to this third angle yet, but all the while we remain above it, okay? The longer we remain above it, the more significant it becomes. If we clear this prior all-time high, okay, and we're still above this angle, then by the time we're in this neighborhood, any breakdowns I personally will be respecting. I don't know if I'll necessarily be calling the absolute top if it breaks down here, but certainly if it trends up like this and breaks down higher up, then I probably will be, at least in the short term, calling major tops. Of course, as ever, I will have to be open to playing what I am terming a low probability bounce on the way down, just in case we get some kind of violent shakeout double pump. Raul Paul was right, okay, up into a right translated cycle. But now though, as I said, the longer we're above the third angle, the more significant it becomes. If you don't want this party to be over sooner rather than later, okay, if you're in that camp of people that says, yeah, no chance of a recession, and you really need to see this angle lost pretty pronto. There's a nice chart here from Kushi, okay, you can see the diagram here, it matches this very, very nicely. And this also implies that we are perhaps about to start to go parabolic, a touch of this trend line, should we make it, okay, puts us at around 220k. So, is that too bullish? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge. I wouldn't be surprised, okay? If it did this and then we zoom out and have a look at that, is that super insane? To my eyes, at least, it isn't. 220K certainly feels like a big number. I will give you that. And also, I wonder how accurately I can do this. I think this would be somewhere around Q3 or perhaps early Q4. So it would still qualify as a left translated cycle top. Pretty interesting time to be alive. Again, if you're not in this camp of people, if you don't want to hear what I'm saying, if you want standard four year cycle stuff, that's fine. But you really need to see us start to go sideways or down in the immediate term. Okay, if we don't start to do that pretty pronto, then we will continue to go up. And of course, if we continue to go up, it continues to look an awful lot like a left translated cycle, which tells us to be open at least to an extended bear market decline. That would be pretty rough. A lot of people would get worn out. A lot of people would probably walk away and never come back, right? Once we get past the 12-month point of a bear market, a lot of people will be sat there going, it's broken. It didn't do what it always did. It always has a 12-month bear market and recovers. Always has a 12-month bear market and recovers. This time, 12-month bear market followed by another 12-month bear market. You better believe sentiment in here will be horrifically bad. It will be horrifically bad. Many, many people will quit forever here and assume that this was a failed experiment. 
I think in terms of the ETFs, because I was getting a lot of these questions as well, a lot of people have been saying to me, Cam, well, the ETFs are here, right? Surely they're not going to buy the top. Surely these ETFs are not going to buy here. And then this whole thing is over in a couple of months, right? And that, that, that could be right. I could be wrong, of course. But from an institutional standpoint, it kind of makes sense to me, right? It makes sense for a number of reasons. Number one, I just assume the worst of these institutions. I assume that their game plan is ultimately to capture as much of the supply as possible. That's what I assume, okay? If I was them, that's what I probably want to do. And so one way of doing that would be to blow this thing off, okay? Which forces people to come in and buy the top. It also marries people to the idea that we're going straight to a million. This is the super cycle. And then you slowly walk this thing down and distribute the ETF to all the dip buyers, knowing that after about 12 months, the market has been trained and conditioned to look left and say, well, after a 12 month bear market, there's a good time to go all in, right? And then that'll probably get a little pump and then the ETFs can continue to distribute into this. Like I said, by the time we get to here, this thing will be determined dead. This thing will be pronounced dead. It will be considered a failed experiment. Many, many long-term holders will puke their positions. And this, in my humble opinion, is the way to wear out the long-term holders. This would be the way to really, really, really grind them down, forcing them to hand over that long-term hodl supply. And thus, then the institutions could come in, buy it all up here, walk away with, I, I guess their target would be 30 or 40% of the supply. Whether they get that or not is, is to be determined. I have no idea how much they'll actually manage to get hold of. I have no idea how diamond handed those people that call themselves diamond handed are. But like I said, if we could get this big walk down, right? And I should say this now, okay, I know this is 14K. I'm not calling for a 14K bottom. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, top to bottom, we might only see 40 or 50%. It could be a very slow grind distribution, just wear everyone out, make them think that this is gonna go down forever, okay? But my guess is they want to target 30 or 40% of the supply. If they can do that, then by the time they get into this neighborhood, then they can send it to the big, big, big numbers, right? Then they can do the million bucks a coin. Remember, if we, indeed we do get that blow off top, deflationary bust, big round of printing, lower high, blah, 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 blah. And by the time we get here, okay, we're gonna have severe inflation, severe demand for a big, you know, chunk of Bitcoin. And then maybe that is how they capture this thing. So it's pretty wacky, it's pretty speculative, admittedly. But I also think this is how you harm the most amount of participants. People don't wanna hear that this thing's gonna go straight up and then straight down forever, right? Again, it doesn't have to come all the way down to these obscenely no numbers. It could easily just drop from 200K to 100K, nice 50% dip, but really, really grind this thing down over an extended period of time. That's where the institutions come in and buy 30 or 40% of the supply. I guess that's what they target. Again, that's where we find out how many of those people that say I'm never selling and I'm diamond handed. <laughs> that's where we find out how many of them were talk and how many of them are really serious about what they say. You better believe at this point, retail is never coming back ever. You also better believe if this is the scenario that plays out that 99% of those meme coins, altcoins, whatever, they're going to zero and never coming back. Okay, probably they launch regulation here to prevent them coming back. I would think that kind of makes sense, right? And then going forward, they've got a huge chunk of the supply, control over the asset, the ability to probably launch other leverage products and futures on the spot ETFs to control the price and suppress it when they need to, at least in the short term. Retail has been locked out. And then we go straight from, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60K to a couple of million bucks. And very, very few people actually get to capture Bitcoin as a life-changing wealth instrument. Again, I know it's highly speculative as always. Take this thing one day at a time, right? It was by no means a call or prediction, but I'm just saying, if this thing continues up, Okay, if we get a blow off top and an extended bear market, then that whole scenario I just described, that makes perfect sense in my brain. My brain is pretty fried. I'll give you that. My brain is pretty wacky. I do my best to protect it from all the 5G by wearing my tinfoil hat all the time. Okay, but you know, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes I start speaking and I'm like, where am I going with this? Right, that, that was one of those times. Anyway, I think I've made my point. Let's keep going. Reserve risk for Bitcoin. So far at the hard right edge, lots of space above. Okay, now I'm going to butcher this, I think. But the reserve risk, I believe, is the relationship of the long-term holders relative to the price. So I think what this implies is when you've got high confidence in the long-term holders and a low relative price, it tells us that they're diamond-handed, they're confident in their investment, they're not planning on selling, and thus it could be a cheap time to buy. And when you start to see this metric move higher, it implies that the long-term holders are no longer confident that the price rally can be sustained. They're starting to offload their positions, right? They're no longer in that diamond hands camp of people and thus synonymous with tops coming in for Bitcoin. Where are we today? Well, we've got a relatively low price, okay? Lots of space to the upside and still quite a lot of confidence in the people that are holding for the long term. So it tells us to keep an open mind about seeing higher prices walking forward. And another cool on-chain metric is the MVRV Z score down the bottom. Okay, you can see this dotted red line at the top. All prior tops, we at least came up and touched it, including this one, which in terms of momentum was relatively weak compared to all the other prior tops. And at the hard right edge, okay, you can see plenty of space before we even get close to it. Implies that there's probably more gas left in this goose. Something else I want to point out as well is the red is the 55 moving average. The 20 period EMA is in green. Now notice, okay, green above red, fine. That's bullish. Okay, that's a bullish uptrend, bullish uptrend every time. The thing I want to draw your eyes to is notice where the top is, okay, relative to 
that 20 moving average, okay? There's a lot of space between this 20 period moving average and the top. There's also a lot of space between this 20 period moving average and the top. The same in every case, right? 20 period moving average, a lot of space to the top. 20 period moving average, a lot of space to the top. Where are we today? We're not trading a big space above that 20 period moving average. We are currently sat right on it which not only aligns with seeing higher NVRVZ scores, but also aligns with seeing a higher push up. The other thing I wanna draw your eyes to is look how steady this angle is for those moving averages, okay? Now compare that to here and here, compare that to here and here, compare that to here and here, here and here. What do you notice, okay? Very steep upward sloping moving averages in every other case here, quite lackluster. Tell me at least to keep an open mind about seeing these things curl up with a parabolic price. All of that would be permitted by the MVRV Z score, of course, and the reserve risk would also look something like this if it were to occur. So based on everything I've shown you so far, I think we can be open in the short and medium term to seeing continuation to the upside. How violent it goes, you know, I think mine's pretty conservative, this idea. Kushi's probably a bit more to the bullish side, but I'll be more than happy with this. I won't at all be surprised, as I said earlier, if we did something like this, okay, and then zoom out and just look at this whole chart, does that look super insane to you? It doesn't look super insane. It doesn't look super out of the ordinary. That looks like Bitcoin doing Bitcoin things. RSI has plenty of space as well overhead. So for now, at least, long and strong continue to push and we will see what the market can give. Here is the dollar chart. I put the daily cycles in for the dollar. This right here was the last daily cycle and you can see that we have printed a failed daily cycle. So far, we're coming back up, but of course, cycle theory tells us to expect a rollover and for the next daily cycle low to form below the prior one and below that failed cycle. So we now have cycles on our side telling us to expect a rollover. Of course, that rollover into the cycle low is gonna be below the prior lows should also be below this critical upward slip in blue support level. So if we can get this rollover, okay, little counter trend bounce from here, something like this, left translated daily cycle, and then off we go, okay? It sets up that rollover, doesn't it? It sets up that rollover, it sets us up for scratching off this three-year cycle low and accepting this as the three-year cycle low. And it also tells me we could potentially be moving this squiggle down here, and this is what we'd be looking for, okay? So a wild time to be alive in this period here, if it is to play out, we should expect major blow off tops in everything. I'm talking precious metals, Bitcoin, crypto, stock market, the lot. So indeed, a wild time to be alive. The daily cycles are now aligning to tell us to expect some further downside. And like I said, that could indeed catalyze the final portion of this rally that I've been talking about. And look at the chart of truth, the 10 year yield, okay? Back into resistance. This was spoken about you know, a week ago. This is normal and to be expected, followed by a rollover, hopefully. And of course, the big thing about that is if we do indeed see these bond yields roll over, it also said that we might get this play out more like this. And if indeed that is what happens, okay? If indeed this breakout rolls over and fails, then this will be the two year yield leading lower, which tells us to keep an open mind about seeing the Fed funds rate lower as well. Just like I've showed here many, many times before, when the two year yield rolls over, we typically see the onset of a Fed cutting cycle shortly thereafter. Every other time in history, we saw this thing occur. And historically, stock market and risk assets top within the first two months of the onset of that cutting cycle. So again, we need to see some more work. We need to see this not follow through to the upside. If it does, then we're gonna to start to have major invalidation on this whole rate cuts in the middle of the year idea. If this thing can indeed roll over, then the writing will indeed be on the wall. That VNQ short that we choked the stop up on, still pushing this, okay, let's see if we can get it. Bitcoin continuing to hold above the breakout level. The longer we're above, the more significant it becomes, similar to this third and final angle. Not 100% convinced this is gonna be the one we follow, but it would fit with this fractal idea. It would kind of fit with a blow off top and a left translated cycle. So as ever, one day at a time, and until the market proves me wrong, until the market invalidates me, then I remain long and strong, see what the market can give. There was some pretty decent back tests occurring yesterday in the crypto stocks. So looking for those to hold and resume to the upside. And if that can happen today, again, that will be another subtle hint that we probably are going higher in this Bitcoin space. We are getting the normal and to be expected half cycle high at the moment in the gold and silver markets. So happy days there. Long and strong continue to push across all those gold and silver related positions we've got in the members section as well. As always, I'll notify you if something changes. Oil looking perhaps to break down. So is this a day three or four high for oil? What would this be? Day three high? Maybe. As always, I want to give it a little bit of space, make sure we can be sure. And then I think it's pretty much time to look to hop into a trade. And the stock market still no sign of a half cycle low, is there? Okay, and I was saying this, whilst it would be normal and to be expected to get a half cycle low, okay, whilst we might get it today or tomorrow even, if we don't, then you can only interpret this as a hint from the market, a tell that underneath is completely abnormal underlying strength to this rally. Again, is exactly the sort of thing you tend to see in the third and final blow off top angle. You don't tend to get big dips 
in the last section of the blow off top because the whole thing is driven by greed, fear of missing out and euphoria. Same deal for the NASDAQ, okay? Unless we get a half cycle low, then the thing is in full bore bullish blow off top mode. Same is true of the Dow. The Dow got a little bit of a pullback, but again, if it resumes up, okay, then you have to listen when the market speaks. Russell 2K still trying to emerge, still can't break free. I think when it probably eventually does, then it's going to be pretty violent to the upside. What a wild time to be alive as ever. I'm going to keep coming back, keep repeating myself, keep taking it one day at a time, keep remaining open to all possible outcomes. And until next time, I hope you're doing well in life. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.